All right, guys, here we go. We're going to talk about trading view. Um, today, I'll be going over the setup, some of the things you can toggle on and off, how to template different charts, how I set up my charts uh, from literally every setting. We're going to start from scratch and then how to share those and get links and actually give them to people and, and share out share out your content. Uh, we'll cover a bunch of stuff in between. Um, without further ado, let's get started. So let me switch views to make this easier. I'm going to get tiny here. Um, so what I wanted to show you first off, I've got a chart up. We're going to start fresh, but I wanted to go to the profile in the top left corner. Uh, one setting I like out of the gate, and again, there's a bunch of different billing things and just trading view is so advanced, but we're not going to be talking about any of that. What we're going to be focused on is just some of the things that might make your experience a little bit better. I personally love having my charts dark. Uh, the brightness drives me nuts. So I toggle dark mode right away. The difference between them, I'm not even going to show you because I hate it so much. So that would be the first thing I'd set. I would set it to dark mode. The next thing I would do is I would click the down arrow over here and I would do new layout. This is basically a new chart. So we're going to start there. I'm going to do new layout. And let me make sure you can see this good. I think you can see this good. So we'll leave that alone. Um, this one's already got something in it. It says unnamed over here. Uh, I'm going to just delete that real fast because we don't need it. We're going to have... I guess, you know what, we'll leave, we'll leave clean spark in here. It's still a blank chart. There are alerts on here. I'll show you how to set those up for now. We're just going to ignore them. Um, I'm not going to cancel them because I think they might tie in with the other template. Anyway, first, let's start off. We're going to give this thing a name. We're going to hit the down arrow. We're going to rename. And we're going to call this one test chart because I want to get rid of it when I'm done. We're going to save that. You can see it up here. Now, there's an auto save function. Never use that. Um, I I mean, you could, but I've done that before and it's auto-saved accidents and wiped out my entire chart. I leave that off. It's really easy to save. You click this down arrow and you can save right here. Um, I'll show you in a second. But let's go ahead. One thing I want to do, I want to turn on sharing right away. When you do that, there's a little link you can click on and it goes to your clipboard and you can give this to people. That way you can say, hey, look at my chart. Um, also in here, notice you can make a copy. You can also load other charts if you want to, and then make a copy of them. That's a quick, easy cheat for I've set up my chart, but I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of my other chart. So you load it up, you click the down arrow, you search for the one that you want, and then you go ahead and click it into there. And then you go back to here and then you do make a copy. And then you rename that one. And then you put whatever ticker you want on it. And then you're good to go. You've got your settings in there. All the stuff I'm getting ready to do, you don't have to do. Now next, quick, right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. Go down here. There's A for auto fit screen. This means you can move it around, right? If you uncheck that. If you lock it, it's going to be fixed. And when you move your mouse, it'll go up and down. Sometimes the auto is helpful if you get the view all screwed up but otherwise I turn it off. Also, logarithmic. Now again, now that I've clicked this, I'm gonna do this. Logarithmic is used whenever you're looking at like really long time frames, or Bitcoin or, or SHIB coins. You, you need it for those because you're looking at just very large moves and I won't go into what logarithmic means. I don't wanna overcomplicate things in this video. But if you want to do charting the right way and you've got long time frames, just turn it on. I leave it on all the time, honestly. I think it's just the easiest way to chart. So I would recommend that. Next, next, once we've got this in here, there's different time frames at the top. I never touch these tiny ones. I sometimes go into the four hour. When you get really good at this stuff, you'll never look at this shit. Uh, I was going to try not to cuss. I'm just not good at it. Anyway, you shouldn't look at it. If day traders will tell you, oh, I do all this stuff in these time frames. Sure. Maybe they, maybe some of them make money that way. 98%, 99% of them lose money. They think they have a system. They don't. Um, they're not looking at macro. They're not looking at fundamentals. All the stuff I preach. And so you don't need to look at these time frames. You might delve into four hours. Maybe if you just have some questions 
about like trend lines and other stuff. But don't in the beginning. Stick with daily. I've got three day in here. I don't even use that that much. It's usually daily, weekly, monthly. These are the time frames you're going to use. Now, the next thing I like to use is indicators. You got to figure out, you got volume by default down here. You can see that. And then, oh, down here, this is news events. So when you click down here, oh, my head's in the way. Let me move this over. When you click down here in this little lightning bolt right down here, this is the news events for the day. So you can go through these and start to see what news might be out there. That's super helpful. Also, you can see what upcoming earnings exist and click into the financials of the company right from here and see what's going on with the company. This is all cool stuff. On the right-hand side, you can see the market cap quickly. You can see whether or not they beat or went under earnings expectations. You can look at annual and quarterly views, get a quick idea of what their income statement looks like, balance sheet, cash flow. Everything is here. You can see indicators for buy, sell, just really cool stuff. There's a lot of other things on the screen. I'm going to stay away from it. I like to keep things simple. I do this all right here. There's a bunch of other screens I could show you guys on things that are just awesome. But here, here's what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the indicators that I use. Let's jump back to that. So I'm going to click this button right here for indicators. You can look these up. I've got a bunch in here. That Here's the main ones. I like to have my three moving averages. The primaries. I mean, people do exponential. They do all kinds of things. There's so many different methods. But I like to use 50, 100, and 200 moving averages. Simple moving averages. I found massive vol uh, value in those. And um, anyway, so if you want to emulate what I'm doing, this is what you should do. I would click this one time. You'll see it pop up here. It changed to two, two, three. Now, when we look over here, we see three of them. We're going to have to adjust those in a second, but I'm going to load the rest still. So we'll get back to all this stuff in a second. So the next thing, I want my RSI, Relative Strength Index, one of the most important tools you can possibly have. Then underneath of that, I put my MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence. So this shows you convergence and divergence, and it's got a line that can kind of guide you through that. And then there's the stuff I do, um, which I'll show in other videos, but not right now. So we're going to click that. And then I don't know if, if the screen's darkening for you, but just in case, I'm just going to click off real quick here. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that was. So, okay. So, and then I'm going to I'm gonna shrink this up a little bit. I like to look at my main chart first and then have these be a little bit smaller. Now, next, I got one other indica indicator I love. It's the VRVP. Everybody asked me about this one. It's the Visible Range Volume Profile. This one, you might have to have an upgraded version. I'm not sure. So you'll have to check for that. Now here, so I'm going to go through the moving averages first. The 50, I personally always make purple. It's just easier for me. I also do this. I go down to here. So I click inside of this. I go down here and set it to the second thickness because I want to be able to see this. Um, then I go to inputs and I change it to 50 because the length of time is going to be 50 days, 50 weeks, whatever time I'm, time I'm on. I click that and now I've got my 50. I go to the next one. Oh, and if you want to hide these, this little thing. There's other stuff I'll show you in a second, but this is a great. Um, okay, so now we're going to make our 100. 100, I always use yellow. Again, it's just, I do this across charts because it makes it consistent and makes it easy. So I'm doing yellow. I click my little second bar so I can see it. Boom, 100's done. Now we're going to do 200. 200's like a dark orange for me. Um, I think I usually pick this one. Is it this one? Yep. And then I do the second bar again. And then again, inputs. I want 200 days, weeks, months, whatever we're looking at. Now I've got my three primary moving averages. This is what the majority of people use for just basic TA. All right. So next, um, we want to go up here to volume profile. Sometimes this can be a little goofy. I'm going to shrink this. And then I'm going to expand again and see if I can get in here. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to click settings. Now I change my row size to a thousand i like i don't like this big bold stuff i like really tight levels of detail that you can see here it just gives me a lot of refinement in what i'm doing and that's a big deal so let me click this here i think that's pretty much what i do yeah that's it it's just row size that's my big that's my big change and we use this so between all of these what we're doing is we're looking for support and we're looking for resistance levels so right now we could have resistance at this 50 moving average, the purple one, or we could have support down here at the 100. You can also see volume support underneath of here. 
So maybe we're okay. Um, so again, these are, these are the basics. These are all the indicators I really focus on. Uh, and these are the ones that I would recommend that you have. Now, I'm probably not going to go into RSI too much here. I'm trying to think of what other things I want to cover. Oh, also, um, I will show you a couple of other things. If you double click here when you're at the top, or if you're in here, like if you want to look at this, you can see this double click to get out. If you want to see just, just the chart itself and not the RSI and these other indicators, you can double click here and to hide and bring them back. Right. Also down here, this little, this little hide all indicators, you can hide drawings, indicators, positions. If you have your, your exchange linked to trading view, you can have that stuff in here and it'll show like your positions and your, where your orders are at. I, I don't do any of that, but you can definitely do it. Trading view, view is just like such a cool place, but here, I'll show you this. Boom. Everything's gone. Boom. Everything's back. Hide the drawings. I don't have any drawings, but if I did, they would go away. Now, let me show you something else. Let's say, uh, let's say that we knew that this was the bottom on Clean Spark and that this was the top. And we wanted to see over a, like a large time frame. Like this is the bear market, right? So I know this is probably the bottom. And I want to see how much further we're gonna go. Um Actually, let me do it. This will be a better example. 2020, bottom of the market. 2021, top of the market. And now we feel very confident that we're down at the bottom again. So when we're looking for how much further we're going to go, we use something called a fib-based uh, trend extension. Trend-based fib extension. Yeah. Okay, dyslexic. Here you go. So, and again, I put stars next to these. You can do it right here. That way I can just keep track of it. The retracement's in here too. You only use your retracement if you think you've, you've peaked out and then you want to draw a retracement to figure out where your support levels are going to be. So we're sticking with trend-based fib, fib extension. I will draw it down here, right at the point where it starts. I bring it up to the top of the rest. Some people bring it to the end of the wicks. Other people do it um, all the way, like disregarding the wicks. And I'll show you that. Like I'll zoom in here. I'm going to double click because I want to shrink the rest of this. Some people will draw it to where uh, you don't really have a wick here. So that's a better example. Ah, down here you do. They, I like to do it this way. And then sometimes I change my chart if it doesn't look right and it doesn't line up with support and resistance zones. You kind of have to finesse that sometimes. So sometimes I might bring it like to the actual candle wick for the day, day because that's going to be more accurate. Other times that doesn't work well and you just need to include it all. Anyway, so we can see here, oh, I'm a little bit off. I'm going to bring this here. Also, when you're drawing things on here, you can lock them right here. This is cool. So that way, when you're screwing around and moving stuff, you don't ac accidentally move your fib. And then all of a sudden, you're telling people, I think we have support here when you're it's completely off. Like right here. Look at this. This is cool. Clean spark right out of the gate. You could see where this was resistance on the dot three, eight, two fib extension. And then now you can see where it's resistance again. We have yet to find a moment where we get above this and we turn it into strong support. We broke all the way up above the 0.5. Then we broke down. Then we tried to hit it again, found resistance, and then we went way down underneath the dot 382. But we need to turn this into support. And you can see we got some volume under here. So that's cool. And if we move out, our chart actually, the VRVP actually adjusts to show us any additional volume that might be within that time frame. And again, I can scroll my mouse here to shrink this up if I want to, too. And then again, use the mouse to expand if I'm not on this line. So there's different ways to kind of finesse everything on the screen. But definitely know your, uh, your, your uh, trend-based fib extension. I'm going to delete this one real quick. Just hit the delete button. I do want to show you, though, what a fib retracement looks like. Okay, so I don't use these too much, but we would draw down here. We would go up here to the peak. And if we knew that, oh, I think we were top, you guys, the RSI was really high up here. It was at, I don't know, the highest level since 2021. I think I even made a post about that. This is getting scary. What are our, what's our retracement zone? Honestly, we might be in it. This is beautiful. Now that I'm looking at this, I should have actually drawn a fib, a fib uh, uh, retracement. So you could see where we hit this. This is the dot 618. It's called the golden fib retracement zone. Um, there in Fibonacci sequences, it doesn't matter what it is. This is the area where you're you're most likely to see like a retracement 
of some kind, whether it's resistance or support, this is where it's most likely going to happen. So I can't tell you the science behind why that is is what it is, but it, it's the truth and it's the way it works. So you can see on the daily here, we actually got close to, you know, a support level and maybe we're at it or maybe we go further. Maybe we break down, but there's there's decent support here between the dot six one eight, the 100 and the 200 moving average. I might actually have to buy some more micro strategy and pick up some more miners today because I'm liking what I'm seeing. I should actually look at Bitcoin first, though. But um, anyway, I digress. I don't want to get into, too involved in one specific chart. But um, these are the indicators I use. And then if I wanted to copy this, I would go here, click the down arrow, make a copy. Give the copy a new name, like cut chart two. Hit save. And now I got a new chart. There's my test chart. There's my new chart. Also, if you wanted to save, again, I turn. I don't use the auto save feature. If I ever make changes, like you actually have to make a change, or sometimes at least you can make some changes, but you have to change the time frame to get it to where it sees that it's ready for a change. And then after you do that, you can click this button, and you've just saved it. You overwrote your chart. So. That's the way I like to do it so I don't accidentally auto overwrite like a lot of work because I get pretty involved. But um, let me see here. So again, if you want to, I do things with like trend lines too. So let me show you some of that. So a trend line is just simply this line up in the top literally says that. Pretty easy, right? So a trend line, you can click this, you put, pick your starting point, you draw up over here. And okay, I've got a trend line. I don't really like this one, so I'm going to move it a little bit. And I want to make this a resistance one. So I kind of have a golden rule. If it's a resistance trend line, it's red. And if it's a support one, it's green. I think that kind of makes sense. So I will go down here. And your bar might be in different places. You can move it. I keep mine down here. Oh, and that's the wrong one, actually. It looks like this is the one I'm looking at right now. So I will change this to red. Oh, that's not actually the red I like. I like my shade of red right here. I can change the size of this. I do that sometimes for like st really strong resistance, really strong support. I'll change the size. When I like where it's at, just so I don't F it up later, lock it. Now, I'll click on this one more time, and then I'll draw what I believe to be a support line. And again, some of this is just practice. Um, you have to draw these and kind of see them. Now, again, you can you can see them though. Like you can see where the trends are. Look at this. If I do this right here, I'll change it to my green color. I'll leave it this. I'm gonna lock it real quick, and I can zoom in. That's the thing. I can move my mouse up. I can move my mouse while I'm on the price thing to expand, or I could just hit auto down here. That'll do it too, right? Oh, and let's see. Oh, you know what? It didn't take my logarithmic setting. Oh, no, I see what's wrong. They've got these now. This is a new change. They've got these logarithmics for each one of these. I would only use it on the chart. But there's the there's the automatic adjust right there. I'm going to turn it off, though, but it just kind of corrected my view. But look at this. You can see how this touches at all these points perfectly. So this is a support trend line. I would like over here to have a few more touch points to make sure that this is a really good resistance one. But it is what it is. So if we broke down under this, that would suck. That would suck. We'd probably be going for a new low. If we broke down to like 440, and I think the chance of that happening is like 2%. <laughs> so this isn't realistic at all. It's just an example. Um, oh, here too, you see this red line. This is the peak. Whenever it goes all the way across like this, this is the VRVP telling you this is the largest amount of volume anywhere on this chart. That will be peak resistance and support levels. So keep that in mind. Very important. But let's say for some reason, if things got crazy and we dropped way down here and broke underneath of this, I would be super scared that we we would complete this next Fib extension and, and go right down to test the previous low. That will not happen. I mean, maybe if there's a, maybe if the company fails. It couldn't be a Bitcoin thing. It would have to be a company failure, I think. I mean, with 99.99% probability. Anyway, um, let me see here. I'm trying to see what else we might want to learn. Oh, let me show you a few other things. I do price a lot too, right? Let me go to that. Oh, and I draw some boxes every once in a while. I'll show you that. There's this little paintbrush over here. 
you can go down here. I'll do like a rectangle and I'll draw a box showing support. And you can, again, down here, you can see how you can change the color of it. Inside of this here, you can change the opacity. Again, you can change every aspect of it. You can change the border and then you can lock it. You can do all that stuff, right? Like I'll lock it in place or you can just delete it right here. So there's that. Also, another thing that I think is pretty important and that I want to show you um, as soon as I find it. Let me see. Here. Oh, text. You can put text in here. You can do anchored text. You can call outs, all kinds of things. There's so much. It's almost a ridiculous amount of functionality that TradingView has. There is nothing like them on the planet. Oh, right over here. Um, forecasting and measurement tools. I hit the drop down over here. There's two things I like to use here. There's date range where I can say, hey, how long has it been since we were at the bottom? So I'll put it right here. And then I'll draw it over to here since we hit the top. How many days was that? Boom, 373. Everything in here, again, you can change the size of it, all that stuff, just like you can do with anything else. The thing I use more importantly, though, isn't the date. It's the price range. If I want to find out how far we've dropped, I go straight down to here and say, oh, okay, how far down were we? Wow, Clean Spark was down 53% from the high. That's probably a pretty good buy-in level. And honestly, with this FIB extension in here, the golden, re the golden retracement zone and getting a bounce off of it, this is probably a golden space to buy. I think I'm probably going to drop maybe another 20, 30 today. Anyway, um, let me see. Oh, I got to span this. It's getting dark on my screen. Maybe you can't see that. I hope not. So uh, we covered a lot already. I showed you this drop down window over here where you can see the VRVP and my, the simple moving averages that I set up for the 50, the 100, and the 200. That came from indicators up here. Again, you can look through this whole list and see what, what you like. There's so much in here. There's scripting in here. There's This is just crazy, all the functionality. I can show you more later. If you wanted to change the type of indicator, some people like things like uh, hollow candles, whatever. I, I never use this stuff. Heikinashi, uh, that, that can be somewhat helpful. It gives you a, here, I'll just show you. It does a pretty good job of showing like, a deep red, like you're in a downward trend or deep green, you're in an upward trend or you're chopping. So this is good. Like if you just want to see like, oh, well, okay, we were definitely in a downward trend. Have we established an upward trend yet? No, we don't have any green. But if we started to get some green, you know, maybe we're taking off. But again, there's areas where you can chop too. So this is just, it's a good visual indicator, but I don't use it. I'm going to go back to my regular candles here. I'm going to save my chart just for the heck of it. Um, you can create portfolios in here. They have a mobile app. I mean, this thing is so great, guys. There's so much in here. And again, for the company, let's just scroll down here. Uh, we can see average volumes. And volumes can be important. Uh, I'll cover that in another video, though. I don't want to talk about that now. This cash flow and all the stuff. I hit more financials over here. You can see everything. Everything these guys offer, like everything is here, all of it. It's beautiful. Again, the technicals, I can clip more, more technicals. You can look at different time frames to figure out, okay, is this a buy on the weekly time frame? Oh, yeah, it is. What about the monthly? Nope, neutral. So, and th these, I never use these, but it's good though. It's good practice, especially in the beginning, for you to understand that from an oscillation standpoint and moving averages, that you are in a buy zone. And if we went down a lot more, you'd be in a strong buy zone. So it's good to know that. And if we look at things like, let's see if it's what it thinks on the shorter time frames. Yeah, it's still just ugly. It doesn't look great. It's trying to establish a pattern. But, um, but that's great, right? Like that's good stuff. And you can see analyst rating. This is important. See forecast. You can see what analysts think. I actually never use this and I probably should, um, or at least display it to people. But, uh, but yeah, look at this quarterly. You can see you can see upgrades, downgrades. You can figure out what's happening with the stock. Look at this. The range that people are picking for this stock right now is not low. So like if you saw that you had options that were giving you two to three X returns that are out a year for like a leap where you got a lot of time and you see that everybody is forecasting this thing as a strong buy to a buy, like, hey, 
get to it. You know, that's a great opportunity. And again, all this is in the bottom right or the right hand side of the screen. See forecast, more technicals, more financials. Use this stuff. It's amazing. Um, this right here, I think this is just a yeah, this is a news event. So you can see those on the on the right hand side too, it, like really big lightning news events. You can see those and click on them and then find out more. Anyway, I think uh, I think this is it for now. This is kind of what I wanted to show you. If there's more subject matter that you guys want uh, in regard to trading view, like hit me up, add it in the comments. I'll have my wife. Um, <laughs> there's this guy Farazad who does who does Tesla stuff. Some of you might know him. He's got producer wife. I'm working on producer wife. I might have to set up a subscription service and get some of you guys to pay three dollars a month to be able to to make it worth her while, but I'm trying to convince her to help with thumbnails and just a bunch of other overhead work that I don't have time for. I want to be an investor and I want to help teach um, and produce content. And uh, I don't want to do all the work. So I might, I might utilize her and have producer wife helping out a lot in the future um, and see, see how much interest we can get in that so that I can start doing this a lot because I would like to give you guys a lot of different content. I'd like to an answer your questions. I'd like to, here's the thing. For me, I know a lot. I can learn more and be, there's no better way to learn in life than to teach. So if I, I sometimes I got to fake it until I make it. So I'll be like, yeah, sure. I'll show you how to do that. And then I've got to learn it all really quick so that I can convey it or at least convey it intelligently. Maybe I know it, but maybe I need to find all the nuances. So this is, this is, this is making me better. Um, while at the same time I can help you and that's just cool. And I want to do a bunch more and I'm hoping we can all grow together. Anyway, I don't want to carry on in this thing. It's 26 minutes already. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up now. Love you guys. Add your comments. Like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And uh, I'll try and produce as much uh, quality content for you guys as I can. Love you. Have a good day. Bye.